This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Oil prices fell on Wednesday as a stronger US dollar limited demand for greenback denominated crude, though the rising risks of supply disruptions amid the intensifying conflict in the Red Sea curbed the losses. Global benchmark Brent crude futures fell 36 cents, or 0.5%, to $77.93 a barrel by 0215 GMT. T. U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude Futures WTI, fell 43 cents, or 0.59%, to $71.97 a barrel. Brent crude rose slightly on Tuesday while WTI fell as investors saw fundamentals weakening in the U.S. but the ongoing naval and air conflicts in the Red Sea increased concerns of tankers having to reroute to avoid the area, increasing costs and the amount of time for deliveries. A severe winter storm shut a U.S. Gulf Coast refinery in Texas on Tuesday, triggered malfunctions at others and halved North Dakota oil production as it dumped snow and rain across a broad swath of the nation. Total Energy's 238,000 barrel per day BPD, refinery in Port Arthur, Texas, was examining units after a plant-wide power outage on Tuesday morning as a winter storm brought frigid temperatures to the U.S. Gulf Coast, sources familiar with the company's operations said. North Dakota's oil production fell by half on Tuesday due to extreme cold weather and operational challenges, the state's pipeline authority said. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. Norway on Tuesday awarded stakes in 62 offshore oil and gas exploration licenses to 24 energy companies, including state-controlled Equinor, boosting the amount of acreage offered as the country seeks to pump for decades to come. The annual award was up from 47 licenses a year ago when 25 firms received permits. The increase involved drilling permits in the Arctic Barents Sea and the adjacent Norwegian Sea, the country's energy minister told a conference. The annual predefined areas, ARPA, rounds of exploration acreage are central to Norway's strategy of extending its oil and gas production, a policy fiercely opposed by environmentalists, dozens of whom picketed the event. The oil market could be heading for a supply crunch from 2025 onwards as oil exploration fails to keep pace with demand, Occidental Petroleum Chief Executive Vicky Holub said on Tuesday. Holub, who spoke on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum in Davos, said US WTI crude prices could trade in the $80 to $85 a barrel range from 2025. Prices averaged about $78 a barrel last year. In the near term, the markets are not balanced. Supply, demand is not balanced, Holub said, adding that 2025 and beyond is when the world is going to be short of oil. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. London copper fell on Wednesday after data from top consumer China underlying its economic weakness exacerbated demand concerns, with a firm US dollar also hurting the metal. Three-month copper on the London Metal Exchange, LME, slid 0.5% to $8,314.50 per metric ton by 0434 GMT. Meanwhile, the most traded March copper contract on the Shanghai Futures Exchange was unchanged at 67,810 yuan, $9,424.47 per ton. The world's second biggest economy slightly missed analysts' expectation for fourth-quarter economic growth although Beijing met its annual growth target of around 5%. China's crude steel output in 2023 was flat from a year earlier, official data showed on Wednesday, steadying after two years of decline, as resilient demand and the lack of a government cap on output allowed mills to boost operating rates. The world's largest steel manufacturer produced about 1.02 billion metric tons of the ferrous metal last year, data from the National Bureau of Statistics showed. Beijing's imposition of caps on crude steel output to reduce carbon emissions had caused output to drop 3% in 2021 and 1.7% in 2022. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. 
an attack on a dry bulk carrier this week in the Red Sea region is set to lead to more diversions of grain cargoes around the Cape of Good Hope, but most are still willing to risk using the Suez Canal for now, shipping sources said on Tuesday. Houthi forces in Yemen struck the US-owned and operated dry bulk ship Gibraltar Eagle with an anti-ship ballistic missile, US Central Command said on Monday, although there were no reports of injuries or significant damage. Dry bulk carriers are often used to transport grains, although in this case the Gibraltar Eagle was carrying a cargo of steel products. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.